Tuesday, June the 16th. My name is Richard Palais. I'm with Ampac Business Capital. I'm the Senior Vice President of Community Lending. I'd like to welcome you all to this meeting on today where we're joined with our partner, Comerica Bank. We have varying individuals with us. There is Carmen Branch. There is Shelly uh, Pisource. Pisource, Hi, excuse me. And uh, Pi Source, thank you. And then we also have Summer Fawcett with us on this morning. We're excited to have you all join us on today. You can see from the screen that we're going to be uh, celebrating Juneteenth. This is the first in a series of three courses for Business Sense Recovery Bootcamp. We'd like to thank our presenters who are here on this morning. I'm going to take a few seconds to share with you about who Impact Business Capital is, and then we're going to go right into our content. So again, I welcome you all as I move this information over. All righty. Thank you so much. Here we are at uh, Impact Business Capital. We like to say we make access to, cap to business capital as easy as ABC. And for us, that is the application the business review, and finally closing who we are. We are a nonprofit organization, a 501c3 mission-based lender. We are authorized by the U.S. Department of Treasury and also the U.S. Business Administration, which means we have many ways we can help you with financing when you cannot receive financing from your local bank. That is why we partner with Comerica Bank. So uh, we are here to help when Comerica Bank can make the lending for you. And we appreciate you. Our mission is we want to uplift communities, strengthen families, and we want to advance entrepreneurial dreams. What we provide as a partner service to Comerica Bank, we have business advising. So we look for best fit lending partners, which hopefully are us, or if we have to go outside of Comerica and outside of ourselves, we can help you there as well. Sometimes there's other means of financing that are not offered by traditional financial institutions that are certainly going to be beneficial to your business. And please know our goal will always to be, uh, excuse me, our goal will always be to do that, which is most beneficial for your business. We do have quarterly training programs out of our office in Ontario. And then finally, we are a direct lender. Why do you want to choose Ampac Business Capital? Well, it would be for the same reason that Comerica Bank said they wanted to partner with an organization like ours. We value saying yes when others have said no. Sometimes the no is that based on their guidelines, they cannot help. And we try to figure out if, it, uh, if the requirements for being able, the capacities for being able to repay a loan exist. We need to find a way to see how we can help our small businesses. We want to help you overcome the hurdles. We work with businesses from startup to established businesses right up through your interest in purchasing real estate or large equipment. We do various types of SBA and uh, CDFI, Community Development Financial Institution. It just means we have various ways in which we can make lending to you that are not available anywhere else. And we have flexible underwriting with a heart. So we try to figure out, we have to follow guidelines, but how can we help you achieve your goal with receiving capital? And by the way, I'm proud to announce that that 150,000 that is on this slide is now up to 250,000 as we are a SBA 7A Community Advantage lender. And we do have programs that have reward lending uh, options to them for people of color. When you apply, we'll tell you more about it. And finally, this is our new building. This is where we're located in the Ontario area. We'd love to have you drop by. Our president, Hilda Kennedy, who will be joining us on the call, excuse me, joining us in this series on the very last series has actually purchased this building. It's under renovation right now. And we are looking forward to seeing all of you on September 10th when we have our grand opening. Please come by and visit with us and see our entrepreneurial ecosystem. You'll be able to come to our building and get all uh, services that you would need to help your small business start, grow, and expand. Thank you so very much. And at this time, I turn the balance of the meeting over to, to us, uh, uh, Summer, excuse me, with Comerica Bank. Thank you so much, Richard. Uh, we are super excited to be here. Summer Hall said, I'm the National African American Business Development Manager for Comerica Bank. 
And that just means that I get to enjoy our community, whether it's the community-based, business space, um, getting getting resources to, to our community in a way that has never been done before. Uh, with celebration of Juneteenth, this is a day of freedom um, uh, amongst many states, mainly in Texas, but we are here to celebrate uh, with each other. And that is really the, the future of our history has changed dynamically over the last few years. So we are excited to actually celebrate this day, um, have this day known to many people. And what better way to celebrate and, and recognize this day with access to capital, with understanding business recovery, with getting uh, the black owned businesses and other community members in a space where uh, things weren't taught about over the last 10, 12, to 20 years. So this is just an exciting time uh, to be business owners, an exciting time to be part of whether it's AMPAC and business capital or whether it's Comerica Bank, but just to be in the space that we're in. So I, I applaud everything that uh, you are doing with AMPAC. I thank you so much for you, Richard and Hilda and everything that you guys are doing uh, with AMPAC and, and kind of aligning with the banks and making sure that there is no business left behind. So if it's not, if it's a no, it just means not right now. Our goal is to get everyone bankable, everybody in lending, everyone access to capital one way or another so that we can continue to build our, our future the way we see fit opposed to what uh, what's dealt to us. So thank you so much for allowing us to be here. And um, I am open to questions at the end. Thank you. I apologize. I think I'm going to hand it over to, uh, I'm going to hand it, I'm, I do apologize. Uh, I believe I'm going to hand it over to Shelly and Carmen and um, you guys can take it away. I'm not quite sure which order we're going to go in though. I apologize for that. Not a problem, Summer. I'll kick us off here. So thank you so much for having me today. It's really an honor to be here to make this presentation make this uh, presentation in partnership with Carmen and Summer and representing Comerica Bank, but especially in honor of Juneteenth and all the meaning behind that uh, historical date in our history. Um, my name is Shelley Pizers. I'm the Senior Vice President and Director of the Events and Corporate Contributions for Comerica Bank. So I have the honor of directing charitable contributions and placement of grant and sponsorship dollars throughout our footprint across the country. I've been with the bank for about 13 years now. This is my second time with them in my history. And I've actually been in a variety of positions for almost 40 years. So please don't do the math. Don't do the math. <laughs> um, but that many of them were in marketing, strategic planning, um, training, sales management. And then that led to the position that I'm in today um, which is one that I really enjoy, and I'm so glad that it's kind of the culmination of all my career experience. Uh, joining me today, and we're going to tag team through marketing and social media tips, is Carmen Branch. Uh, Carmen Branch is a marketing and communications professional with 20 years of experience. So yes, she's very junior to me, including a decade in the sports industry six years in the nonprofit sector, and the last four years in corporate communications. As the Vice President for Corporate Communications, <clears throat> excuse me, at Comerica Bank, Carmen manages external communications, which encompasses community, media, and public relations for the Texas, Arizona, and Florida markets. And she is truly a partner that I work with all the time as we get our message out to the communities and make our impacts. So Carmen and I are going to share this, and David, who's with us today, is going to work through our deck for us. So thank you very much, David. This allows Carmen and I to hopefully focus on the presentation and deliver the best information possible that we can to everybody viewing today. Um, you can move it on. We're going to go through marketing and social media strategies. So I like to start this with the basics. And I, li I like to think that no matter how sophisticated you are, it's always a good reminder to understand that the concept of marketing 101 is pertinent, no matter what level you're at. And especially in the times that we're living in, we're coming from a pandemic where we go through economic cycles constantly. 
we have all kinds of businesses potentially on the phone. You could be self-employed, you could be a startup, you could be a small business, you could be a little bit larger business with some employees. Um, and by the way, my personal background is that I, my husband still runs a small business and I came back into corporate, the corporate environment 13 years ago after being again in small businesses and having various investments for 15 years. So I have been in your world. I'm in your world. I'm watching the trends. I'm watching the flows. Um, I'm trying to stay on top of it. And we always start with, it might be time to start fresh. Whether you're just starting or you're established, it's okay to stop and do a checkpoint. And that's what Carmen and I are going to suggest today with all these marketing and social media tips. Uh, David? So we have five steps to market and grow. We try to get it down to the most simple way that we can for you today so that you have some takeaways. Obviously, any one of these can, we can get into extreme detail, but we have a limited time here today. So we're going to say it is, it doesn't matter how sophisticated you are. And by the way, in corporate marketing, we do the same. We go back and start fresh. We do a checkpoint. We look forward. We reassess where we're at and where we're going because of the changes all the time. So back to the basics. We'll talk about that today. Getting organized, attracting your potential buyer, engaging with your prospective clients, and your current clients. And then the final element is one that I particularly like, especially since I'm director of events for Comerica Bank, but this is even true again in my husband's small business today. The item that makes you a little bit memorable, that might set you apart, once all things are nailed down and your service is great and consistent, is a little bit of surprise and delight. What are they gonna take away from you that might be different from the five other people doing the same thing you are in the marketplace today. Think about the surprise and delight. So um, we're going to start with that. If you could give us the next slide, David. All right, back to the basics. Who are you? Let's see, um, what is your brand mission statement or promise? It could be very simple. It could be very sophisticated. What are you providing and how can you reinforce that? If you don't know this, you need to know it and you need to be able to articulate it quickly. Does everybody remember the elevator pitch? It's been a cliche in marketing and sales for years. The reason it stuck around for years is that it's true. You need to be able to say to somebody that you meet on an elevator in probably 20 seconds or less who you are and what you do, especially if you're you know, pitching your business. Your business might be you. It might be you as an individual, but whatever it is. So I speak around the country to a lot of different organizations. And what I've often found is when we've asked people for their elevator pitch, there's a real difference between who can articulate it quickly and clearly and provide contact information or a selling point and those who cannot. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more. Um, two to five words are okay. What is your brand? Uh, keep it clear and focused. And that's both for you and your employees as well as uh, your customers or potential customers. Um, so these are some of the things you're going to look for in yourself. You know, what differentiates you? Or do you move quickly? Do you have amazing service? Do you have a high quality or unique product? And then my favorite again, surprise and delight. Hooray, we'll talk about that at the end. All right, next slide, David. Thank you for bringing it back, David, by the way. <laughs> All right, who is your audience? You have to understand your target audience. You cannot market to everybody. You cannot be everything to everybody. Uh, Comerica Bank, um, you know, understands that they are a business bank. So we are there to help lend to business customers of all kinds, but we're a business bank. And um, we don't necessarily try to compete with the retail banks out on every corner with a checking account. That isn't our, mo our motivation. It's not who we are. So that's where we tailor our messages. We understand who our audience is. And that's where you need to organize and invest your energy. Next slide, David.
Market research, uh, big corporations, we think of this as a very expensive endeavor, focus groups, paying for research, Greenwich results, um, you know, all these things, but it doesn't have to be that way. For small businesses, it's about everyday listening. Research your place in the market, who your competitors are, research other successful brands that do something similar to you, understand that people are going to fail, that they're going to have lessons that they learn and watch for that. Maybe you want to talk to your existing customers. If I'm growing my business and I have 35 customers today, I might pick up the phone and call them and say, how am I doing? What have you learned about doing business with me? Are you pleased with your product or service? And my husband and I have actually done this as we've grown a few businesses. And that information is key to helping you move the next step. That's market research. You will have data analytics if you start to deploy dashboards and some social media channels. We're going to touch on that. And you should pay attention to those analytics. Um, if you're getting placing Facebook ads and you're not getting any results, you need to adjust and move, move on. That is research also. Uh, and then pay attention to social media in your arena. Social media can be overwhelming. We're going to narrow some of that down for you today. But once you pick the appropriate channel for you and you're watching comments and questions and remarks on what you do or something similar, that's information you can use. Um, so Carmen, I think, are we, are you, we moving to you now? Yes. Um, okay. yeah, I mean, uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yes, so now I'm going to, okay, great. So um, now I'm going to address um, about knowing your market and customers. Um, knowing your customers will determine how to successfully target and reach them and will drive your content. Um, we'll address this a little bit later, but remember, content is king. Um, along with this, um, you want to identify who your audience is and what products and services are they interested in. Um, and this also will help you determine what social media platforms um, your business should use um, based on um, their interests. Um, next step, um, we will, uh, and then obviously you can also look at um, who influences their buying decisions um, and how much research do they do before they decide to buy. So it's really just intricately getting to know your customers. Um, David, can you go to the next slide? And then, of course, we're going to discuss brand basics. Um, just getting back to those key things about crafting a brand logo, your tagline, the color scheme, um, and um, what's on your website. Um, you want to make sure that you have a name that stands out. Um, it's something that people remember. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously you can identify, but you want them to remember your brand over and over. Um, even the colors of your logo are important. Um, and your tagline should quickly state the purpose of your mission and um, of your company. That's a way to also kind of cheat on the elevator pitch if you can give them a lead in to that. Um, I would also make sure that your brand's logo, tagline, color screen, and website are consistently used throughout all your marketing channels. That means through your colors of your website um, and branded social media posts and also on marketing email. Okay, we can go to the next slide. Um, next up, we will discuss your voice and social media. Um, with your voice and social media, that also will help you to develop um, a strategy and plan and what content do you want to have and what, what content you already have and what you would like to share and how will you communicate um, with your followers, wh whether that be through um, on LinkedIn, through organic posts, um, business to business, or through ads, or even through influencers. Um, we always hear about that. Um, and then also um, revisiting the content is king. We want to focus on the quality of your post or the quantity of your post um, to keep it fresh. It shouldn't go um, any longer without a week, without you know an updated post. And we want to learn what your competitors are doing and devise a plan to stand out from them. Um, so that also can help you decide whether you're going to use LinkedIn, Instagram, um, or Facebook. Um, and another piece of that is um, creating a content calendar and schedule posts in advance um, through scheduling tools. Um, we also obviously know as small businesses, um, you don't have as much time or the um, big teams behind you. So you want to make sure that it's as efficient and effective as possible. 
Um, and then once you identify your content strategy, it will help you determine what social media um, platforms are best to reach your audience. Um, and then we can revisit on the next slide, the elevator pitch. Um, as Shelly mentioned, that is very key um, in getting your point across um, to what type of services and products you offer to the public. Um, you should always be prepared to share your elevator pitch, um, and it's pretty much your mission st statement in a nutshell. And like, as I mentioned before, um, one of the ways that you can incorporate that into your branding is to include that with your, um, with your tagline. And you can also reiterate that on social media through using it as your hashtag um, along with your business name. I think now we will um, turn things back over to Shelly. Thank you. So just a reminder, you probably have seen the images in this deck so far. You'll notice there, there's a lot of mobile devices. And whatever you do in today's world, you need to make sure your pre presentation of messaging or whatever is mobile worthy, mobile designed. 80% of our buyers are using their phones. They're scanning, they're doing their research that way, they're looking through social media for recommendations. So that was deliberate in that imaging um, that you saw all mobile phones. That being said, your website, your core website is also a critical piece. So your website should have a simple design. It should use those elements that Carmen just presented, the colors, the consistency, a clear mission statement or a tagline on there. Somebody should be able to glance at in your viewing screen on a laptop in a moment and know exactly what you do and how to take an action. And if they can't, that's a problem. I don't know how many websites I look at that I'm looking all over the place for contact information or a link to buy. That will directly impact business success. So start with that website make it great. This is one place that's probably worth paying somebody to get it designed. There's some good programs out there, but I would recommend you look at that. And then make sure everything's mobile optimized. Okay, so authenticity. Um, it's important that you're authentic to your brand. I see this a lot where people are out there trying to push a product or service, but it's not really who they are. That's going to be a business fail as well. So you need to really be passionate about what you're doing. You need to believe in it. You need to be authentic to it. And your brand needs to be integrated in everything you do. Carmen alluded to that just in the visuals, right? It should be that your appearance should look the same. But it's who you are and who you talk, how you talk, too. Um, again, having started and run three or four small businesses now, I have firsthand experience. And when we weren't authentic, to one of the concepts that we worked on, that was the business that failed. So you really need to be engaged and you need to have it all over the place. And you don't wanna follow trends. You wanna to listen to social media, understand the trends, but what you need to do is see how it's relevant or it connects to your brand and place it out there. So keep things real and honest. Um, gosh, I can't say enough about that. David, next slide. All right, so the basics getting organized. Remember, we're going to start fresh. You're going to leave this workshop today and you're going to start this week and take another look at what you've been doing, how you're doing it, and maybe what you need to do for the next six months. I can't recommend that enough. The plan should be done at least annually. You have an odd year like COVID. We're coming out of COVID. Things are changing all the time. You probably need to evaluate it every month for a little bit, and especially over the next few years. Uh, COVID to COVID recovery, we're doing this at the bank. We're looking at everything we're doing, how we're doing it, how we're going to deliver as things change. We do that constantly. And the plan doesn't have to be complicated. It can be. We have quite complex ones in the corporate environment, but they don't have to be. And from your position, you, at the very least, you have to have a calendar. You have to have your own measurements of success, whatever you determine you're going to try to accomplish, and you're going to keep looking at those. And then you, you're going to have your, your contacts. I mean, who, who are you going to contact? What's your customer relationship management file look like? Even if it's still in an old Rolodex. I mean, these days you don't have to do that. But, you know, you're, you're going to have those contact information. And how formal does this plan have to be? I've done small business ones on flip charts that we've updated periodically. I've built them in Excel spreadsheets. 
Um, I've had at least one business that we planned out on the back of a napkin and then we moved to some formal documentation. For you and moving forward and promoting your business, it doesn't have to be a formal plan. I'm gonna show you a couple examples here quickly, unless you're going to borrow money. That's a different level and that's where small business support organizations can help you build a business and marketing plan to present to a lender. Next slide. All right, so here's one that has a lot of components, right? This I just pulled a couple of diagrams off to show you some of the things we look at, um, you know, the strategic analysis, are there political factors? What do we, what kind of markets, what kind of products and pricing matchup? This is a complex one, more of the kind of plan that we would consider for a corporate environment, but you could consider it if you're a growing business. Next slide, David. And here's just a simple one, the kind of thing that we manage to when we have a simple program. Again, some kind of calendar. You know, what are you trying to achieve? What is the specific activity? How are you going to measure it? And what are you going to use to get there? You'll be choosing these and you could put it in a simple calendar, design your and develop your content and then deliver. Okay, next slide. Um, all right, so we're going to move to step three, which is, okay, all this is great. We've started fresh, we've organized. How are we going to attract people? If you're a product service uh, company, if you have something to offer that's physical and that requires an experience, like retail comes to mind, and that's, the, that's what we own right now as a retail store, experiential marketing or event marketing is a great way to have people test and try, right? So you get out there at, uh, you might get out there at small chamber events in your area or community events. You might have a booth, you might hand out product samples, you might give someone an opportunity to try your um, product. And, and, and I can't emphasize enough that physical events are back. They're coming back to us already very quickly. So if you're in the space where people touching, feeling, and meeting you are important. You need to plan for that, especially over the next six months. Um, and community-based marketing. If you're a smaller business, you're going to grow your influence in your local community. So make sure you're engaging with the appropriate business organizations and associations. It could be a chamber. You could have a business association on your block, whatever it is. And you want to be an active and engaged member. It doesn't mean you just sign up for a membership. You're involved. Because it's also about connections building relationships, um, reaching other people who might use your product and service, and social listening, right? Uh, research again. Email marketing, you're going to build a customer relationship or CRM database of some sort, simple or complex, and you could be regularly sending emails. If you do that, just make sure that you have permission to send people emails so that you don't get blocked by spam. So in our store, when people come in to buy or they're interested in the product, we ask them if they'd like to join our email list for information about the product, uh, discounts, upcoming promotions, and they opt in. And then we've built the list from there. Uh, digital and social marketing, we'll touch on that. And let's not forget, like the elevator pitch, which is, goes down in history as a longtime tactic, old-fashioned phone calls work. You can pick up the phone and call someone and say, you know, I'd like to introduce myself or you were in my store. I'd like to do a follow up. That personal touch is about building relationships and building relationships is everything. There is a link in this deck and Ampac can make this deck available to you after the today's presentation um, to a video that we produced with Crystal Washington who is one of our favorite partners who talks about technology and relationship building, even doing it remotely, right? With not when you're not in person. And I love that video. So I hope you'll um, join that and take a listen because I think Crystal will have some wonderful tips for you. And they are tips that have stood the test of time. Um, <clears throat> I started my career cold call selling on the street copiers. And boy, if, you, if I didn't make relationships at that time or learn how to talk to people, you know, that definitely was the um, boot camp 
of building relationships. Not that everybody has to go that way, but that's what Crystal talks about is reaching out, the follow-up, saying thank you, sending a thank you note, um, acknowledging somebody's birthday, and all of those which you can do both remotely and in person. Uh, so let's see, Carmen, are we oh, still on me just a little bit, right? A couple more pages. David? So we're now in the mode of attracting. Oh, let's have a word about customer relationship management. By the way, this is the way my husband's store looked last week. <clears throat> I walked in there and there were sticky notes all over the computer, over the point of sale machine, back in the office. I said, what are you doing? How are you keeping track of this? And we, so we organized and instituted a dashboard and a customer relationship. But this might be the way your Rolodex or your contacts look. And if so, you need to clean it up. It's not gonna help you with um, organized marketing. Next. Or maybe you start moving it to a spreadsheet. Remember Excel, first name, last name, email address. These people have opted in. What can we do on an Excel spreadsheet? We can do mail merge. We can do other things if you're doing a simple email marketing campaign. So maybe you've moved it to an Excel doc. Yay, that's great. All right, there are other options for that. Next page, David. Uh, customer relationship management can be a little bit more um, organized. Track them, see the rainbow, because that's, remember the pot of gold at the end? Track everybody that you make contact with, anybody who's expressed interest. Um, and, and the purpose of it is not just prospective customers, but also so that you can understand your current customers. The people who bought from you are examples of somebody else who might buy from you. So you really need to follow their growth and you need to retain them too. Um, if you have a service, you want to grow them, right? And build additional income from that. So there are software tools to do that. I've listed a few at the bottom that are available to small businesses. Um, we say this at the end of the stack, we don't endorse or promote any of these products or services. They are simply examples for you. But Carmen and I urge you to explore these companies and see what's available. Uh, what they will help you do is get off the sticky notes, even beyond the Excel spreadsheet store the information, look for sales opportunity, record service issues. Um, my husband's business is a bike business, so he gets into service items too. So he has to do follow-up. And then it helps you manage the marketing campaigns, your email, your social and digital. And a lot of these types of software programs tie into some of your delivery systems that you might also explore. So you want that technical interface when you're ready to do that and you have the staff or the person to help you manage through that. Now, you could be by yourself doing all of these things and I know that's challenging because you're also running your business, um, but some of the dashboards will actually help you be more efficient. And I think now I'm gonna switch it to Carmen so she can talk about some of those digital marketing items and social media and you know what the channels are. Carmen? Okay, just to um, kick things off from the digital marketing perspective, um, one thing to keep in mind is that um, not every digital platform may be appropriate for your brand. And it's important to focus on the channels with the greatest potential for your brand and resources because you simply can't do everything and be everything to everyone as Shelly had mentioned earlier. Um, personally in my life, uh, on the side, I also um, manage some nonprofit um, social media sites as well as for our family business and the bandwidth is just not there. So you have to focus on what works for your brand. Um, I also encourage, we also encourage to, um, encourage you to cross promote throughout your channel to increase your following and engagement. So you might do a post that says on Facebook to follow us on Twitter, because everyone has their preference on how they choose to follow you. Um, and then even when you're at events, you could do some signs that have QR codes that um, capture or in your store, like Shelly mentioned, that captures your customers and where they can follow you at and get some exclusive information, whether it's, you know, coupons or deals or specials, um, that'll be a good way to also capture those customers and get them to follow you. 
Um, in addition to some other avenues for digital marketing, a huge one is um, search engine optimization. Um, you want to optimize your website with specific keywords and taglines so it shows up in search engines. So when people Google, um, you know, banks, so banks in the area show up and it's Comerica Bank. So you want to make sure um, you do that. That's a very huge piece to one of the businesses that I help manage social media for um, because, um do this in regulations, that's the only way that you really can find um, the business. Um, secondly, I would also make sure that, um, you, like Shelly mentioned before, you do your listening and your marketing research. Um, where do you find out where your customers um, like to hang out where, um, and where do they communicate? Um, we, and moving on to the next slide, David, there's the million dollar question. Which social media platform should my business use? Um, if that's based on your audience, um, your products, and how much time um, you have to strategize on these different um, platforms, as I mentioned earlier. And I think the biggest thing is you need to pay attention to the analytics and the traction you're gaining um, on those um, different um, platforms, and then focus your efforts on those. Data should drive the way you allocate your resources. Um, as a small business, like we mentioned before, you don't have as much time, so you wanna make sure that um, you review where um, you're hitting your sweet spot and who you're communicating with, so that's very key. Um, and then now we'll move on to some of the social basics. Um, of course, Google, my business account, um, if you're looking to make business to business, LinkedIn, um, a business, business to business um, connections, it's good to um, have a bigger presence on LinkedIn. Um, there's, uh, and then there's also opportunities to even seek out, you know, huge influencers if you want to get their attention. So um, just pay attention to those little social basics. They seem like it's a no brainer, but sometimes we get kind of lost in all the different avenues of marketing that we try to pursue. Um, so I would just, when you go back to the social basics, make sure you focus on the specific um, platforms and then how you can um, leverage those connections and um, turn those into business transactions. Okay, the next slide is about engaging. And that is the big piece where you can really um, move the needle um, in your business. Um, for instance, on your website, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but making sure the most pertinent information is above the fold. Anything that, you know, when you first go to the website that you can see on the screen, not that you have to scroll down to see. And then does it include your mission statement, you know, your contact information, um, a call to action? Um, those are the most important things, the first thing you want people to see when they visit your website. In addition, as Shelly mentioned, you have to be mobile compatible in the society. Um, you'll look at, you'll be able to even when you do marketing emails, you'll be able to see the analytics of how many people use, use their desktop to access your website versus a mobile device. And then you need to start catering your information and make sure that it's formatted to that, to make sure that it's optimized um, from a mobile standpoint. Um, another key to engagement is you don't always want to promote. It's the 80-20 rule. Um, look at your customer service and social listening. They might just want to know how to use your product. Um, so it might be necessary to incorporate informational and instructional videos on um, if it's a medication, how to take it, or uh, maybe it is um, how to you know, how do you use the product that, they, that they've that they ordered? So those pieces right there, um, I can tell you if you're always looking like you're constantly, constantly selling, you're gonna lose your engagement every time. Um, another piece to this is um, you need to offer an avenue to provide feedback. Um, customers want the, uh, their voices to be heard. So whether that is on a Yelp review or um, giving a customer testimonial, offer that feedback. Um, whether it's on social media or on your website or even through the email marketing platform that you choose to use. Um, you also need to leverage the power of other influencers through customer testimonials, as I mentioned. It's what other people have to say that has the power about your brand. So you wanna make sure whether it's um, doing a customer testimonial post on your social media account, or um, you can have it scrolling on your website when they first visit, or even um, you can send that out, like I said, in an email marketing campaign. So you wanna make sure that you really leverage the power of the influencers. And it doesn't have to be this huge celebrity influencer. I think people are kind of, you know, looking at the fact that um, if you have somebody that is a celebrity influencer, you might see um, them do endorse 
a gazillion products. So you're not going to be able to stand out. But if you just have that regular everyday customer, people relate. That's more relatable um, to future and potential buyers. Um, you also want to make sure that you comment, share, and like often. Um, provide timely one-on-one -on -one engagement. So if someone leaves a comment on your social media account, make sure that you get back to them within 24 hours because people can see um, who's really engaged um, and who caters to their customers. And obviously customer service is what sets us apart from each other. Um, in addition, you also got to check your direct messages. And then um, another way to um, leverage the power of influencers is making sure that you share those posts that um, those positive posts that customers tag you in. Um, and then next up, um, as far as engagement, also like um, you should network, follow high profile, like high profile accounts. Um, vendors and potential potential business partners, um, they can take notice. You'll be surprised. Um, whoever manages their social media, no matter how big they are, you know, they might take notice. Like, hey, this is something that might be in line with what we're doing, or um, we might be looking um, to partner with someone in this area in the future. So, I don't be intimidated by those. You just never know when um, someone's going to retweet or share something that um, that they find um, appealing to their audience as well. And then um, another piece to the engagement is you want to make if you are uh, you have an e-commerce site, make it easy for people to buy. Um, nurture your lead, make your account to a point of a point of sale um, platform. Um, like so I said, we don't endorse these, but just to give you an example, is like a shop, Shopify or WooCommerce to make a seamless shopping experience. It's all about the overall experience. All right, so after we've gotten the engagement, um, here's some ideas on how you can um, further engagement um, on the next slide with videos. Um, we all know that we are a visual culture. There wouldn't be a TikTok or um, Reels on Instagram if that was not so popular um, and engaging. But not only does it have to be videos, you also can use um, animations in some of your social media graphics um, because basically they just perform better analytically, you're going to get more views, people are going to be more engaged and enticed by what you're trying to, um, you can subtly sell it, <laughs> for lack of better terms. Um, and then you also want to make sure that you have a combination of organic posts, but then you also can leverage that network with influencers again, and share um, videos in that way as far as video testimonials. Um, and obviously people are always constantly on their mobile looking at to see what's going on. And then another piece of that is you might want to, as I mentioned, TikTok and Reels, um, when you go back and look at hashtags, you can see what's the most viral, what's popular dances and tie that into your brand. That also will get you noticed um, pretty easily because everybody wants to see what's the newest trend, you know, what's out there. Um, and then any live videos, live is a big piece going live from events. Um, and even just vlogging, um, people want to know how, what's the process of creating your product. Any behind the scenes footage that you can provide that connects them a little bit more to your brand. Um, and on the next, I think I'm turning it over to Shelly on the next slide, if I'm not mistaken. Her favorite, surprise and delight. <laughs> Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm now an event professional, so this is important. Um, so if you're sitting here at this point, you're going, I am by myself in this business. How am I doing all this? I mean, it's a lot, and you aren't. You cannot do or implement many of the tactics and ideas that we thought about today until your business reaches a certain level. You either need to have additional employees or you might need to pay someone who's an expert in the field to help you manage your social media, design and deliver content, develop little videos. So you're, what you need to do is take all the information in the stack and sort out on a simple plan what you can do and feel good about that. And if your best thing is, is one thing, if it's creating one how-to video that you put out on a YouTube channel a month, then that's great. So just know that we're dumping a lot of information on you today, but the idea is that so you have things to pick and choose from and you have the ideas of what's currently going on out there with marketing and social media. But point of differentiation, surprise and delight. How do you retain people to make sure your business stays relevant and you continue to grow? Um, be that business that maybe delights a customer. If you're in a service business, let's say you're a real estate agent, 
um, you know, make sure you're consistent with the, the thank you delivery gift and you surprise them. You don't tell people you're going to do it. Um, if you're in a makeup business, um, I've seen this with a couple of startup makeup businesses where they have delivered a simple free gift that's like a sample um, saying, you know, try it out. And it was a total surprise. When you go back to look at the Crystal Washington video that I put the link in here, and also that's on the Comeric Bank YouTube channel, by the way. Um, if you watch that, she will talk about the simple things that she does to surprise her clients out of the blue. Uh, we worked with her on a couple of engagements last year and out of the blue, I got from her a simple little notebook saying, I know you like to do research and you travel, so maybe this would be a good place for you to jot things down. It was totally out of left field, but I remembered that of the multiple speakers that we've engaged over the last couple of years. So there was, it was a surprise and delight. So you want to continue to influence um, decisions, buying decisions for you. You can engage and talk, you know, people will then post things online about maybe what it is you did or, or, or what you surprised them with. And that's where you're going to go in, as Carmen said, and you're going to like that and share it and say, thank you so much. You're going to respond to that. And you'll just start to build those memorable moments. Um, and a lot of what I've learned from that was from the hospitality business. You know, there's a million restaurants on the street. The successful ones are the ones where you connect it to an emotion or a memory. And that's what we're trying to say here is, is what can you do to connect to that person's emotion or memory? Um, next. Oh, gosh, there we go. My final part's the most exciting part, and it leads us right into questions. So um, let us know how we're doing questions today. Are, are we looking in the chat? Do we have any? I see a few things in the chat. Let me take a peek over there. What about it, Richard? What do you think? What, what we have directed the audience to do and those that are on the line, thank you for joining us. We actually in the chat was saying to them to use the Q&A. So I'd like to ask again, those that are with us, if you have questions, please use the Q&A so we can separate the two. <laughs> and there's a question. It says, how do you determine a marketing budget? Um. That is a really good question. Um, if you're a startup, you most likely do not have a marketing budget and you're going to ease into it. Many of the things that we talked about here today could actually be done for free. Um, picking up phones and calling customers is not gonna cost you money out of pocket and yet you're gonna be building relationships and building business from that. You, you are going to have to create this plan that we're talking about, either a simple one or a more complex one. And some of those will have price tags tied to them. Uh, you may wish to communicate your product or service on Facebook, and you'll, you might want to look at Facebook advertising and understand the analytics. Um, I, I really, you need to build it from zero up. You have to understand your, your business and your plan and then put pricing to that. And then you have to look at the results. And if you're spending a few hundred dollars a month on placing Facebook ads and you're getting zero results, you need to pull that back right away and go back to basics. Um, email marketing. If you have this list. Let's say we don't buy any of this software out there. By the way, all of those things have a price tag tied to them. There are subscription fees. You're going to have to have some cash flow to do that, right? If you don't have any cash flow to do that, go back to that Excel spreadsheet and you yourself once a week sit down for an hour and send emails to your opted in list about who you are or a new offer you have or um, something you'd like to promote next week. I have a retail store. Come on in and I have all of these items available for 10% off. We'd love to see you, you know, so that's free. Um, so it, marketing budget will be determined and will grow as you have cash flow, but there's no single answer to that. Carmen, anything to add to that? Um, along the lines of, I think you should leverage, like you said, as, uh, as many free opportunities as you, as you have. 
um, access to. Obviously, I'm on the PR side, so I'm always looking for <laughs> building relationships and making sure um, you'll never know, like, if within that group that you send marketing emails um, to, if they are an avid customer, mm -hmm. they may be willing to, um, they might have a connection to a media station, or there might be an opportunity for, if they're looking for someone to um, talk about a specific topic that ties into national tire shoe day. I don't know when you have shoes. I mean, look at the, look at the opportunity to leverage those opportunities because the cash flow is low when you're first starting out. Another piece um, to leverage marketing is the influencer side of things. Um, you might have access to give away some of your products to influencers. And so it's kind of that give and take, and they might just talk about, write a, either write a story about it, if they are kind of um, on the print side of things or have an actual media outlet that they're tied to, in addition to if they post about it. So you might have some goods that you can exchange um, in it for some good publicity from that standpoint. So just trying to be creative and think outside of the box when you have a limited marketing budget. Yeah, there's not a dollar amount in that. So you have to ease your way into it and you have to try different things. And if you don't get results, you've got to pull back. But then you might hit on something where you're getting leads walking in the door. Then I'd put some more money into that item um, and build it slowly. My husband's retail store has been open seven years. He's only at the point now where he has the cash flow to have somebody monitor his social media. He pays for that. He pays for a set number of Facebook ads. Um, he pays for some print advertising, but anytime, and it's, it's really limited compared to a larger business, but anytime something isn't working, he'll pull it back and readjust. So you just have, and you have to be careful about your cash flow. You've got to pay yourself. You've got to pay your employees. You've got to make sure you have good product and, your service is still being delivered. So I would say approach that with caution, but as you find things that work, start building into it. Um, should you post the same content on all social media apps or should they be different? Carmen, I'm gonna let you address that. It's a really good question because it goes back to content is king. Yeah, it just depends on who you're trying to reach. Like we said, the audience. Um, for most in most cases you can post the same content as far as maybe a graphic with it but maybe you tweak the messaging that you have to make sure that it fits that audience um so if it's more of a b2b sale maybe you are offering some type of um sale on your products let's just say but it's going to be more catered to a wholesale approach on a linkedin post as opposed to on instagram and um Facebook or Twitter, that might be more of a community, a retail post. So you can post some of the same content, but just be conscious of your messaging that accompanies, accompanies it. But yeah, I think consistency is key though, because you want to make sure you're trying to maximize the time that you have and you might not have much time. So um, yes, and then you can just kind of cater the actual message that goes along, along with the actual post. By the way, if you don't have content, you shouldn't be in social media because if you cannot feed content and keep it consistent on a calendar, uh, Carmen talked about that earlier, the algorithms will just drop you or bury you. You have to be out there not too much and you have to be, when you are out there, you have to be consistent. So there are actually some guidelines like you you shouldn't post 10 times a day. Uh, uh, there's some research out there in the market that says, maybe once or twice and, you know, a day. And if you have a consistent message and you have the content to deliver, but if you don't have that, and if you don't have the time to, you know, write up or think about nice visuals or if hire someone, you probably shouldn't be out there. In that instance, the very basic you should have is maybe a uh, Google business account. So at least you're present in the internet, but you might not be engaging until you just shouldn't do it till you're ready and you have the resources. Um, let's see, Richard, did you say, uh, how do you balance not overusing trends and making sure you get your product message across? Uh, I feel like it'd be easy to get off brand, especially when trends don't directly connect. Yeah, you know, I think you need to be aware of trends. Um, for example, for example, last fall, politics overtook social in an amazing way, both good and bad, right? 
So from leading into the presidential election all the way through and after January, probably all of, I mean, that was a trend. People's minds were completely absorbed by that. Um, you know, I, for one, watched way too much CNN. I mean, it was like on constantly, right? That's a trend that's going on. And at that time, if you were on Twitter, you were almost... You, I mean, you were dismissed if you weren't having a political discussion, good, bad, or the other. So it wouldn't have done any good, really, hardly, for a small business to jump in that bandwagon, not to mention politics, religious, religion. There's some subjects you don't want to be involved in that when you're presenting your business, right? You want to keep it about your business. So stay true to the brand. And, and I think I put a comment on one of the slides about that. If you have personal opinions, create separate accounts. Somehow, you know, disconnect them from your business and you can do your opinion thing all day long, but do not connect it to your business, your brand. You need to stay neutral. You need to stay true to your brand. You need to attract customers, not offend people in order to grow your business. So you need to separate the business from the personal. And in that case, you might even have different um, screen names and everything. So it's not related to you. I have seen a real estate agent who was all over LinkedIn promoting his real estate items. And then in the middle, he started putting political messages and it was from the same account. And the minute I saw that, I was like, I don't want to be connected to this person anymore. It was an immediate visceral reaction. Well, guess what? He just ruined any potential business. So be careful about that. So be aware of trends. Like I would have been aware of that trend on Twitter. And as a small business owner, I probably would have been back backing off Twitter at that time and maybe using another channel because Twitter was so full of politics. Um, and now, you know, anyway, those are some idea, ideas that where you have to watch the trends, but you don't react to them. You stay true to your brand. Um, what else? Starting out in social media, how much do we know how to start and how much to post? So, Carmen, any thoughts on that before we wrap it up here? I think we're getting to the top of the hour, right? Yeah, so what yeah, I so um, would suggest is start out with like three three to four posts a week I because it can be overwhelming. Um, kind of going back to the trends, everybody wants to do the TikTok videos, like, well, that can take away from your message. And I've seen some small businesses, like their whole feed is all these, whatever the TikTok viral dances of the week, and they're not driving home their message about what they're here to do and their mission statement and their elevator pitch. So I would start out with um, maybe doing three posts a week and then one over the weekend, just to kind of you know, measure the engagement and you're not constantly flooding people. And you want it, like I said, quantity, I mean, it's a quality over quantity. So if you have powerful messages, people are going to still come back. But if you're constantly just like flooding their timeline with, you know, things that are, I mean, you can start like tied into like motivational Mondays, wellness Wednesdays, or, you know, flashback Friday, something that ties into um, weekly um, social themes, um, for back, lack of better terms. So I would just start out slow. And then as it increases, um, as you see fit and you have the con you have to have the content to share. So you just don't want to overshare because it waters it down. I think we're at the top of the hour. So Richard, David, Summer. <laughs> we are at the top of the hour. Summer, Carmen, Fawcett, Shelly. Just according, I just read the names, David, according to how you if you're on my screen, by the way, there was no, that was just totally random. But anyway. <laughs> Thank you all, everyone, for what you shared today. I sat here as a small business owner myself and said, wow, I didn't know that. So I've learned a lot. It was very intriguing. We have our guests with us as well. They asked uh, one or two questions here and there um, because, again, the information was very, very overwhelming but exciting because now we have so many ways in which a small businesses we can look to learn how to move our businesses along. Thank you all so very, very much. We look forward to seeing those in the audience to join us on next week when we'll have a, a, se a separate topic. We're looking forward to having you join us at the same time, 10 to 11, right here on Zoom. Please take care of yourself. Be safe. Happy Juneteenth to all, and please enjoy your weekend. Bye-bye now. <laughs>